All right, what is going on, buddy? So we are back for another conference preview. This is going to be episode six of MM Pod. I'm the head of Mid Major Central on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Today's podcast is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're going to be doing tier list today, inspired by Green Spe- Green Screens Media. Uh, so shout to him for shout to them for giving me this idea. Um, I even have some of the exact same tier list categories as they do. But yeah, let's just get into it. So we are going to be starting off with going over our top my top five impact transfers in the. Patriot League. So, yeah, this is not a very portal heavy conference at all. Um, but there are still some pretty good newcomers. Um, I'm gonna get into them right here. Coming in at number one, I have Kyle Carl Simo transferring from Eastern Illinois to Colgate. Um, Carl Simo, you know, Hill. He'll give you, he's he's not a big scorer, um, but he's someone who can get touches every night, um, you know, be a, be a good defender, uh, you know, only average around five, four points per game last season at Eastern Illinois, uh, but I think he could be a really key contributor to this Colgate team as the Raiders do lose some solid guards, um, but yeah, I think he'll I think he'll be able to set up and also be a good rebounder as well. So he's coming in at number one for me. Now at number two, I have Ben Palacios. Now Ben Palacios, I mean, I he is transferring from Maryville to Boston University. The thing is, I have Boston University finishing last in the Patriot League. Now, you know, I feel like his impact will kind of depend on will he be there for the rest of his collegiate career. Um, so, you know, that, that kind of depends on it and if he'll be their leading scorer and if he'll not genuinely make an impact, not genuinely make an impact this season, but if we'll make an impact on that program, uh, I think it's definitely possible. He had a really solid season at Maryville. Coming in at number two, at three, I have D'Angelo Steins. Transferring from Old Dominion to Loyola, Maryland. And, you know, just would be a solid role player. I think he'll have get a lot more playing time here uh, with Loyola, Maryland. Uh, but, yeah, he is coming in at number three. At four, I have... Um, I have Ethan Okawuso, but, you know, he transferred from Southern New Hampshire to Boston University, uh, and, you know, he is, he's, he's more of a big, yeah, he, actually, no, I would not, I want to say that, yeah, I don't really know too much about him, um, I just know he had a really solid, see, like I said, this is not, a transfer heavy class, so this was really kind of just throwing in like the only other transfers in this class. Like, I think there were only two, but there were only I think there were under 10 transfers in this cl- in this conference. Uh, so he had a really solid season at Southern New Hampshire. So I think him and Palacios are going to be the two main guys. Um, also, Spencer Joyner and some of their returners, but I feel like they'll be the main guys on the team that I don't think will finish that high. In this conference, at five I have uh, Lucas Savicic. Um Lucas Lucas Savicic, um transferring from Eastern Michigan to Lafayette. Didn't play, hasn't played a lot in his collegiate career. Um, I don't believe. Um, but we'll see if he gets any run. I feel like I feel like he could, you know, be that guy. That, you know. He come off the bench for them. No guarantees there. Uh, but I have him coming in at number five. 
All right, so those are all my impact transfers. We're going to be doing my first team and second team all Patriot League predictions. So we're going to be going over them here. Starting off with the first team. And for 2023-24, first team all Patriot League pre preseason predictions. First, I have Keith Higgins Jr. for Lehigh. I think he's in for a really big season. Uh, could definitely come uh, to definitely win player of the year. Uh, and then I have Keegan Records for Colgate as well. Uh, Tyler Whitney Sydney, another guy for Lehigh. Uh, I have Will Batchelder for Holy Cross. And I have Matt Rogers for American. So Will Batchelder, Will Batchelder uh, was a really good freshman last season for Holy Cross. Um, I think he has a big year. Averages around 16, maybe 17 points per game this season. Um, it's also ha has a really good all around game as well. Uh, you know, he, he can pass the ball, he can rebound, he can defend a little bit. So, yeah, I definitely like that. And then Matt Rogers, I feel like will fill in that void. The uh, you know they lost Johnny O'Neill um, to Santa Clara. Uh, so I feel like he'll I feel like he could be better than Johnny O'Neill. I mean, Matt Rogers is a pretty good player, so. You know, um, I definitely love him for, uh, like him for American there, uh, coming in, uh, as a big man on all conference, all conference first team. All right, second team, all Patriot League preseason predictions. First, I have Elijah Stevens for American. Could win deep point in this conference. Possible. He's only five foot nine, which is kind of crazy. Um. But really good perimeter defender, really good on ball defender. Um, so yeah, you know, solid shooter, solid, really solid passer as well. Uh, but yeah, he can, he's definitely going to be a really good player in this league once again. Uh, so yeah, uh, at, um, next guy I have here is Sean Yoder for Navy. Uh, Sean Yoder had a really uh, solid season uh, returning for Navy, just a solid overall returner. Um, for the midshipman, I think he'll, um, could average around 12, 13 points per game. He averaged around 10 points per game last season. Uh, but yeah, really solid passer, um, as well. Decent rebounder. Um, I have Ryan Moffitt at, I have Ryan Moffitt here as one of the big men, uh, for Colgate. Um, like I said, him and, him and Keegan Records are going to be, you know, a threat in the major basketball once again. But not only that, they're getting another year of experience under their belt. So, yeah, I think, I think that's, I think Moffitt absolutely deserves a spot on one of the all-conference teams. Uh, and I have Bo Montgomery for Holy Cross and Tyler Nelson for Navy. Two guys that will make a very significant impact in this conference. Um... So, yeah, you know, I, I, I definitely think um, there are some pretty good big men in this conference. There's a lot of um, versatility in this conference, um, in my opinion. But, yeah, those are my all-conference team predictions. Um, and let's move on to my 2023-24 Patriot League, Patriot League preseason awards predictions. So these are going to be the awards. Player of the year, I have Keegan Records, like I said. Uh, yeah, Keegan Records for Colgate, like I said. Um, he, you know, Keith Higgins Jr. could really be in that mix. Um, and I was trying to think. Like, I, I, I don't think. I don't think it would be a Tucker Richardson type, situ type situation. I feel like Tucker, Tucker Richardson was a clear cut favorite. Um, for most of last season. Um, but Keegan Records, you know, it's going to be competitive. A lot of versatility, like I said, in this conference. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Depoy, I have Tyler Nelson for the Navy Midshipman. Uh, you know, can get you steals, can get you blocks, can be a good rim protector as well, and a solid um, inside and perimeter defender 
as well. Um, so I definitely like Tyler Nelson winning Depoy. Like I said, Elijah Stevens could also be in that mix. Um, Golden Dyke for Loyola, Maryland could also be there as well. Um, and for the Rookie of the Year, I have Joe Nugent for Holy Cross. A three-star was really solid and one of the best um, recruits in the state of Massachusetts, I believe, last season. Uh, but yeah, he is staying close to home and going to Holy Cross, and I think he'll be making an impact once again, kind of like Will Bachelor did. Um, but I think he'll be solid, you know. Um, but, you know, could be a very good rebounder, solid defender as well. Um, at, for the newcomer, I have Kyle Carlsino. Um, I could tell with the impact transfers list. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, sorry about that noise, by the way, but like, like I said, you know, um, you know, 4.45 points per game. At Eastern Illinois, may not seem intriguing at all, um, but you know he, I feel like he could be a pretty solid contributor if you just watch him play. Um, but yeah, you know I like that him as a newcomer. Uh, Coach of the year, I have Dave Paulson for Holy Cross. Yeah, I got Dave Paulson, man. I think Holy Cross um, was not good in this league last year. Um, David. Dave Paulson, you know, was able to return some really key returners. Um, yeah, like, like the returning production is really good. Um, not just in this conference, but or not just for Holy Cross, but in this conference as well. Uh, but Holy Cross gets some really good returners, like I mentioned, Bo Bachelor, um, Bo Montgomery, uh, Gerald Gates is gone, uh, but he did exhaust his eligibility, so. Yeah, but, you know, uh, and, you know, it, it was able to bring in some solid freshmen as well. So, yeah, and he looks like, oh, well, you know, he has a good mindset as a coach. Uh, so I think Holy Cross, I think Paulson and Holy Cross, um, Paulson gets the coach of the year here. So, yeah, uh, he, those are my pa er, Patriot League, 2023-24 Patriot League awards predictions. Um, and I think I'm just going to go into my tier list now, because, and then I'll, you'll kind of get an idea of what my standings are. Um, so, yeah, let's just start off, let's start off with the tier list here. So, we got American. Now, American, I don't know why it's doing that, uh, yeah, that's going to be annoying. But American, um, are they in the mezzanine or are they in the courtside? I think they're a courtside team. I think they are. I don't know why it's doing that. I really apologize. Okay, let me just, they're definitely not in the nosebleeds. All right. We got American in the courtside. I just think, like, Matt Rogers is really underrated. You know, they add a transfer... Um, in Nick Marshall, he wasn't on my transfer list, uh, but maybe he will be able to contribute. Greg Jones, really solid incoming freshman, um, like I said, uh, Elijah Stevens as well. They lose O'Neal, but American, they are they are coming in at number three in my stains predictions. Um, so yeah, I think they're definitely courtside for that reason. Um, Army. I want to say they're in the nosebleeds. Um, yeah, they just lose. They lose their top three lane scores. Um, you know, it's really hard to evaluate evaluate the military schools. Um, but yeah, you you gotta respect um, the Army West Point. So, but I just think in terms of basketball. Uh, they are in the nosebleeds. Um, I th I think because I you know, I I believe I have them finishing ninth in the conference standings. They just lose a lot, man. You know, Colton Benson, Jalen Walker. You know, those are really 
key losses. And they lost Jalen Rucker kind of pretty late in the portal season as well. So, yeah. And I'm also going to have Boston University. Um, okay, this is annoying. I guess I just have to look at the shadow. Okay, I also have Boston University Nosebleed as well. Have them finishing 10th. You know, I just don't think Palacios um, and Joyner um, and Okuso, you know, will, will lead that team immediately. But, you know, having them here, I think, is pretty solid. Uh, and then we got Bucknell. Uh, are they also in Nosebleeds? I'm going to say they're in Nosebleeds, too. Because I... <sighs> this would mean I have them finishing 8th in the conference. Uh, so, I, you know, I think that's fine. They they lose a lot as well. You know, they're coached pretty well. You know, they lose Timmerman. They lose Andre Screen. You know, they lose, it's like, they lose their big man. They lose Xander Rice. You know, they bring back, they bring back Jack Forrest. They bring back some other solid guys, solid contributors. Um, but I just think, Overall, Bucknell, you know, they bring in Quinn Berger, who I don't think has played yet in his career. He might have. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but... Yeah, Colgate, they're core side, 100%. I mean, Colgate, you know, they're, they're good every year. Top 25 mid-major pretty much every year, um, or at least recently, in recent years. Uh, so, yeah, they're going to be in the core side. Um, you know, they lose Tucker Richardson. Uh, I think Corsa is obviously where they're going to be at. Holy Cross, are they in the court side? Are they in the court side? Hmm. Hmm. Ah, they might go have to go in the mezzanine. They might have to be the first team in the mezzanine. Uh, but I have Paulson winning Coach of the Year. I just don't think courtside. Uh, that's tough. I have Holy Cross finishing fourth right now. But, yeah, so I think Holy Cross, uh, I'm putting them in the mezzanine for now. Uh, but we'll, we'll see if I change that. All right, we got Lafayette up next here. Lafayette is an interesting one. They could go in the nosebleed. Um, but I don't know. Lafayette, they're solid. Like, they return... They return a decent amount. They lose guys like CJ Bolton. They lose Josh Rivera. Um, you know, so the, you know a couple key losses here and there. So that's why it's, it's kind of tough with them. Um, but you know what, Lafayette, they're coached, they're, they're coached solidly, I mean, you know, just kind of looking at it here, I'm just going to take a look at them, uh, real quick, but, yeah, so Lafayette, I feel like seven, finish, them finishing seventh is kind of a good spot for them, um, you know, I don't have any of their players finishing on uh, they're on the Patriot all conference teams. Um, maybe all conference thirteen. I I didn't I didn't do that, but yeah, but um, they lose like their top three, three four lean scores. Um, Beluga Savage Fitch. I mean, you know maybe you know his top five impact transfers, impact transfer. You know, there, there, there's not like I said, they're not a transfer conference. So I mean, you could look at that a different way, but. Lafayette, I'm going to have them seen the mess name because I feel like they're not going to be... I feel like they're generally a tier above Army, Boston University, and Bucknell um, this year. So, I mean, I think Mezzanine is a fine place to put them. Lehigh, they're going right up into the court side. Um, they're actually in my mid-major top 100, I believe. I have them finishing at 59. Um... But yeah, you know, this is kind of unrelated, but go follow along with that. Mid-Major Top 100 on Instagram. Uh, Mid-Major Central, just search it up. Um, it should pop up. But 
yeah, the high. You know, they return most of their guys. Um, Keith Higgins Jr.'s guy, I'm really high on. Um, as well as Tyler Whitney Sydney, going into another year with them. Just, just experiences, you know, what you get out of this team. They got some solid incoming freshmen as well. Um, so, yeah, you know, along, along with that, you know, they return, you know, most of their team, uh, so, you know, that's obviously going to be good, you know, huge in a league like this, because, you know, most of the teams below them, they don't return a lot, um, but, yeah, they got, like, um, Lehigh's got, like, Sorry, I'm just gonna pull them up here. But no, yeah, they you know they they didn't once again a team that didn't add much in the portal, but um you know bringing some incoming freshmen, this year Whitlock, Cam Gillis, Josh Ingram, Jake Pike. So I mean, you know I feel like all four of those guys will make an impact in some way. But yeah, you know I feel like Corsheim is a solid place to put them. Loyola, Maryland. Loyola, Maryland. They brought in Old Dominion transfer Dan Fulstein, who was in my top five impact, who is in my top five impact transfers. Um, but, in this conference, but, you know, they do, Golden Dyke is actually a guy I really like, who I was considering putting in one of my all-conference con- all teams. Um, but yeah, they return, you know, they return Fowry, they return Deion Perry, they bring in Matt Gray, they bring in some solid freshmen, Matt Gray, uh, Jordan Stemke, uh, Troy Cicero, so, yeah, you know what, they're gonna finish in the mezzanine, in my opinion, um, you know, they're usually really solid, so, I feel like, once again, they're, Blake Lafayette, I feel like they're just, a tier above Army, Boston University, and Bucknell. Uh, maybe bring back most of their core. Um, so, once again, it's kind of, it's really, like, hard to evaluate some of the military schools, especially, because I, I use verbal commits to kind of um, do my research on these teams. Um, but I also sometimes look at their official rosters. Um, uh, kind of their coaching staff, but I'm going to go with the mezzanine for Navy. Um, shout out to Navy, man. I, I've actually, um, I've actually visited the Naval Academy before. It's really, really cool. Um, but, yeah, no, Navy, you know, they returned Sean Yoder, um, Tyler Nelson, who I actually have winning deep, who I think it's close, like I said before. Uh, but, yeah, you know, midshipmen, they are, I don't think they'll be, I don't really see a world where they're near the bottom, I mean, I, I just don't see it, I mean, like, last year, they finished second or third, I believe, in the Patriot League, so, uh, I think, I think, like, around five is a pretty good spot for them, um, but, yeah, let me know what you guys think of this tier list. Starting off with the court side, we got American, Colgate, Lehigh. Um, I'm rounding out the court side. And then we got Mezzanine, um, who has Holy Cross, Lafayette, Loyola, Maryland, and Navy. Nosebleeds, we've got Army, Boston University, and Buck Nell. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think of these tier rankings. I think there's definitely some comfort. Like, I could move Holy Cross up. I could move Army up. You know, I could move Lafayette down. You know, I could move Bucknell. They could even use Boston U up. But uh, I just don't really see that. You know, there's obviously has to be teams in the nosebleed. There has to be teams, you know, in the mezzanine. So, um, yeah, but let me know what you guys think of these rankings. I think they're pretty solid. Um... And, yeah, this podcast episode was a little bit different today. Um, Maybe next podcast, I don't know when the next podcast episode will be and which conference it will be. 
Um, but just to clarify, if you guys aren't keeping up on or aren't aren't following on Twitter, um, I did the swag preview. I did the NEC preview. There's just not going to be podcasts for those conferences, um, and there also will not be a conference for the WAC. Um, MVC, I'm, there might be a podcast for that. Um, I will let you guys know, but you know, let me know you guys think of this and subscribe for more of these MM Pod episodes. And yeah, I'll see y'all next week.